Oh, we got to tell All right, let's do this. I got that thing. You know what? Hold on. It's been a long day, okay? All right, guys. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I create my composite photos. So essentially where I have two photos and I combine them into one. So for this, this tutorial, I'm going to be using this photo that I took last weekend in Arizona and this photo that I took last weekend and how I turn them into this photo. So, all right, let's, uh, let's just jump into it. I want to make this as short and painless as possible because I haven't eaten dinner yet and I'm starving. Oh, that Red Bull is really making me burp a lot. All right, so uh, let's just hop right into Lightroom. So... Here's our two photos, right? This is me walking across Devil's Bridge in Arizona. And this is a shot we got from the last night we spent in Arizona, um, which, crazy story, there was a car accident, like we had almost died on the road, but that's a story for another time. Um, but essentially, at the end of the night, we saw some wild lightning storm and I was able to sh shoot lightning for the first time. It was, uh, it was quite the experience. I typically start editing the photo that's going to take up the majority of the shots. So right, this is the foreground of me walking across Devil's Bridge over there. Um, and to sort of get that initial just vibes and tones I'm going for, I, uh, I use one of my presets, or right, my DL Landscape preset pack. Um, I think for this one I ended up using the PNW Punch. It sort of gives a desaturated a uh, little flatter black look to it so and I also really like the colors of the rocks that uh, came out with that that uh, PNW punch preset so I won't I won't tweak this thing on beyond belief like I typically would do before I go throw it on the gram for you guys but um, right so it looks like looks like we may want to bring the blacks down just a touch more give us a little more depth in there and Maybe just add a little more, a little more vibrance, but... So that looks pretty good for the starting photo. Um, and then if we work our way over to the lightning, so I shot this a little underexposed so I could run at uh, ISO 100, you can see there. Um, and just so I could give myself a longer, uh, a longer shutter time to capture all the, all the bolts out there. Um, so let's bring up the, the exposure a little bit. You can see this guy is... Uh, Nice and in focus, pretty, wow, that's wild. It's really cool. Um, wow, also looks like I need to clean my lens. Look at those little splotches. All right, anyways, um, so let's throw a little bit of an S curve to bring our blacks a little bit blacker and our, our whites a little bit crisper. So the, the next thing on this photo, I sort of, I didn't really like this, it's really like, it's almost like a like a lighter blue. I wanted I wanted more like a heavy like stormy stormy vibe to this. So I desaturated the blues a little bit, but then the thing that really gives you that like heavy punch is the luminance. So if you click this little guy right here, it selects all of your um, the colors that are near this blue. So right, it shows you it shows you blue right down there when I when I scroll over these blues. So I click and hold. And I drop it down a little bit and it really it really makes this area stand out. So maybe you want to add just a little more saturation to the, those oranges and yellows in there. Uh, so we do the same thing, just click this little guy, go over the, the color hue that you want to saturate more. You click and hold and you can bring it up. See, look, you can blast that out. So you never want to go too, too high or else you get that banding like you saw, that banding right there. Also, fun fact, if you double tap saturation, luminance, or hue, it resets all your sliders back to the original. Uh, so let's bring this back down a little bit. Bring the saturation up right there. Now we go back to the original photo. We go to photo, edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop. And that opens up our Photoshop window. So now we have our first photo in here, so we're going to want to unlock that layer so we're able, able to play with it. Um, and then we also want to bring in the stormy layer. So right, photo, edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so now we have both photos here. So to bring this photo, 
in over the one of me walking across. We go to the little move tool, drag on it, hold over that, and then drop it in. And we are we are in we are in sh good shape right now. So to sort of see what we're working with here, we're gonna want to drop our our opacity. So let's let's bring it to a 40 so we still can see the initial photo. So essentially what I'm doing here is I am looking at here, let's let's boost this up a little bit more for you. So I'm looking at this ridge line and I want to make sure that this ridge line is completely underneath the this ridge line here. So it's a complete sky delete. So we go in here, uh, we drop that down so we can see there's no other spots where this ridge line is above the photo of me. Okay, so I think I think we're looking pretty good right there. Maybe we can bring it up just a touch. Yeah, that's, that's good, that works for me. Okay, so now comes the fun part, right? So we have we have our spot, our sky completely covered with the lightning shot. So typically what I find on a lot of people's sky deletes, they just follow the horizon line and just cut out everything underneath uh, this shot so that the, the ridge line matches perfectly. But to bring that extra little element in, I wanted to keep this bolt right here so that it landed in the valley. So it, it adds like a three dimensional effect to this shot as opposed to just having the lightning die right at the horizon line. So I like to keep the opacity right around 50 when I'm starting to cut out foreground of this, this shot. So let's see, so we'll go over to the magnetic lasso tool. So it's, it'll sort of follow the, uh, uh, it'll sort of follow like really like con high contrast areas. So you can see how it start, sort of sticks to the horizon like that. So we'll just do this real quick. Um, so I like to do it in, in steps so that uh, because essentially if you go off track, you have to start over. So you don't want to do the whole thing at once or else it's a, it's a pain in the butt. As you can see, I sort of, I, I made my, oh, threw that around. So as you can see, I just follow the horizon line here. Follow the horizon. And then we're gonna to wanna to cut that bolt off right there. Keep going, keep going. So maybe we'll call that good. So you complete the circle and then you just delete that. So you, you create the circle, hit delete, goes away. And then to get rid of those lines, you hit command D, which gets rid of uh, the squiggly lines. So right, you got all the floating lines, you hit delete, the part's gone, but now you just gotta hit command D to make, make the squiggles go away. The marching ants, or whatever the heck they're called. So I will I will plow through this next little bit, deleting all the sky, and uh, yeah, we'll check back in in a second. Also, one one quick tip: while you're delete, while you're following this horizon, deleting the lines, I like to keep a feather at about one one pixel up here. Um, that what it what that does is instead of just cutting right on that one pixel, it sort it takes the the pixel on either side of that line you're creating and makes it about a 50% opacity. So that way, it just helps the image blend better together because. Right, you're not gonna have that perfectly crisp horizon line or else it just, it doesn't look as, as realistic in my opinion. So now that, uh, now that we have cut all along the sky there, right, you can check, boost up your, your opacity on the sky and you see that it follows the line really, really well right there. But we have all this, all this garbage on the bottom. We wanna get rid of that. So you go to that little rectangle up there and you create a nice little box right there. Delete that off. We'll delete that. Command D to get rid of it. So right, boom, perfect, we're all set. Ready to throw up on the gram. No. <laughs> what I did over here, because um, I wanted to bring this bolt down here into the horizon. Actually, oh, 
One more thing I did is once, once I had the horizon line cut out, I then grabbed the whole top photo and brought it down just, let's see. What I did is I brought the whole top photo down just a hair to hide any sort of that, that drop off where the, the, the actual sky of this photo started to come through. Now you can see that's a nice clean line across, across the photo. We wanna make it so this bolt comes in into the photo nice and nice and crisp. Maybe is what we were doing before, except you gotta zoom in just a little bit more. So let's bring the opacity to 40. Zoom way in on that and then go to your lasso tool and we're just going to do the same exact thing. So this gets a little more detailed. Um, I'll just I'll sort of fly through it here um, just to just to give you guys a rough idea of, of what we want to do. That is it for bringing that bolt back in. So we zoom out, right? We, we pretty much have the general gist of the shot, right? So we got the lighting bolt coming in, we got me in the foreground, the colors are pretty much right where we want them. So now to bring this guy back into Lightroom, we go to layer zero, file, save. And what that does is it creates a whole new file in Lightroom. So we come back over here and Ta -da. <laughs> so there's the photo right and so wow i have said so 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 many times this video <laughs> all right cropping this thing for instagram that's next so right we go up to the crop and whoa my light just went out. oh that means boost the iso <laughs> yeah i hope that's good all right so Getting that, that Instagram crop, that four by five aspect ratio to give you the most uh, most real estate on the screen. So you go over there, crop and straighten, original, four by five. Uh, so this photo, I'm able to, even though it is shot landscape, I am able to crop in because my camera takes a high enough resolution photo. So right, we crop that just like that. And then my final thing that I do on these photos typically is I will use some of the brushes up here to really, really make the, the composition mix better together. So I try and use the brush tools to give that final little mixture of the edit, right? So we'll go under brush here. I'm probably gonna wanna lighten this to make this almost look hazy in the distance over here. Sort of give us that like dusky, almost evening evening feel. So I'm liking, I'm liking the exposure. Uh, boost it up a little bit as well as the dehaze, as well as adding haze with the dehaze tool, so as opposed to just going that way to dehaze, you pull it back this way to add haze, essentially. As well as clarity, I find that when you add a clarity drop along your horizon, it sort of helps things to blend better. It helps to make that line that you initially made cutting out the, cutting out the foreground blend better with the background. Um, so right, we'll sort of add a little more haze in there. Once we have finished, editing and making all the little tweaks to help blend the final image better. Pretty much go to file, export, um, we'll call it cool lightning Devon photo, right? We'll export that. I already exported that once. Um, so we'll use unique names, pull that over into the folder, click on the photo, share, airdrop, and wait a second and my phone will pop up. You click on your phone and this is only if you have Mac. If you're on Windows, I don't know, you gotta use something else, some Google Drive or whatever. So yeah guys, that's pretty much how I edit my composite photos. If you wanna see more videos like this where I walk through my editing, my techniques, just how I color, all of it, drop a comment below and let me know and also hit that thumbs up button. It, uh, it actually does help out. I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of the year, so uh, yeah, share this and sorta of, sort of help me get there. <laughs> I'd, I'd really appreciate it. So a link to my presets are in the description below. Uh, I'd love it if you guys check them out. And I will see you guys next Thursday at 6 o'clock. I got, a, got some, something fun planned for this one.